Joe, that's that's about all the Chicago that I could take for right now. How do you? That's I, it. I, I I don't have. I can't. Chicago. I don't want to start off like this. I you love wanna? this song. It's just too much for me. It's too. Okay. Um, We're I've, coming to everybody live from the meat locker known as Mike's home right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I sweat if it goes above fifty. Okay. So let's um. Well, we have a surprise today. Okay. Uh, um, we do, right? I'm not. We have a surprise. Yeah, we have we have a surprise. It's um. It's the third member of the Horsemen. We are joined by the Nature Boy, BK. How you guys doing? BK, I'm, I'm, I'm doing better. It feels right. I feel like I'm in the middle of a testosterone sandwich between you two. Um, we have the technology of, uh, I don't know, 1987, so we have to kind of huddle in around the phone. But, God, it, feel, it just feels right. I'm going to play some Atari later. Yeah, I'm going to play Nintendo. I'm, I'm a big fan of Atari, so hey, that, who, that works out. You show me a guy that wasn't a fan of Atari, that's a guy that I don't want on the horseman. So it's been, we, haven't, we have to make an uh, apology. Should we apologize? No, I don't think so. Anybody, anything? I, yeah, it's been two weeks. Okay, we we've dropped the ball. Um, it's it's been a couple weeks. We've all been pretty sour for those two weeks, though. So yeah, I would. Things have been uh, trending upward, I guess you could say, in the last two weeks. But we're back, and uh, we're here with BK, and we're pumped. We uh, we've been talking about doing this for a while, so I'm glad we finally got to do it. Let's just uh, let's start. I I don't know where to begin. There's been so much that happened the last two weeks. Where do you? Uh, you know what, BK, where do you want to start? I think the only way to start is recap the Elimination Chamber, which okay. I think, on the whole, was a better event than everybody thought it would be going in. And I, I think, think we should start from there. Okay. I think, uh, I, on paper, I think the Elimination Chamber looked good. Um, but I think, actually, we, none of us were able to watch Elimination Chamber live. We were at the Evolve show that we had talked about, um, which I thought was an awesome show. Everybody, so, please support your indie wrestling because so, without indie wrestling, there's no WWE and there's just no wrestling period. So it's, he's come. You know what? It, and the more you know, Brian, supporting the, the cause, support exactly. the cause. Um, so we were at the Evolve show. It was awesome. I mean, we won't go too far into that, but uh, a lot of things happened at Elimination Chamber that we had no idea. I think uh, I had gotten home that night and you guys had both watched and you both texted me about it I was like oh, I'll watch tomorrow and I fell asleep and I woke up and I was like well it got me the holy shit chant that night when John Cena lost to Kevin Owens clean uh, Kevin Owens or BK depending on who you ask because our buddy BK looks is the spinning image of Kevin Steen sounds 35 to 40 pounds self-proclaimed better slightly better looking Slightly better shape than Kevin Steen. More attractive, doesn't smuggle a bowling ball in his stomach, but goddamn, I love Kevin Steen. So. And Scout's Honor, I was actually described as a better, more in shape Kevin Steen, so that's not a lie. That's not. That's Throwing the fours up now, so you don't tell the truth. <laughs> that's, that's as good as a hand on the Bible, Joe. Uh, Joe, we'll start with you. What did you think of... The, I mean, I don't, there's so much to talk about. I don't want to spend too much time on any particular topic, because I want to catch up on a lot of stuff, but just tell me what you thought about the, the, the whole show. Or um, well, just that match? Just start with the Kevin Steen match. Uh, well, I thought that match was really good. I mean, that's... Um, you know, I mean... I, it was... You know, I think sometimes when you have the... Uh, like fresh matchups like that where guys haven't wrestled before and maybe there's some sort of mystery about who's going to win or people actually care about the result. It makes a big difference in the outcome of the match. So I thought the match was very good. I mean, um, Steen busted out, a, oh, excuse me, busted out a lot of cool moves in the match, I think. So um, really varied things up and they had some good near falls and the surprising finish of him winning clean. You know, I've got a good crowd reaction. I think it got everybody talking. So I marked out when he had the double underhooks for the package pile driver and they turned in some weird sidewalk slam it really pissed me off but the match as um as a whole was awesome i agree with you and i think the whole not knowing who was going to get the the finish and then the kudos to john cena i mean I, I know there's a lot of john cena haters but um respect the man don't quite respect the wrestler that's just my opinion on john cena for the newbies out there um fair enough but i think um he did a lot of good for kevin steen and it just goes to show that, you know, Kevin Steen's going to be around for a long time. I, Brian, I think it was you that told me Kevin Steen signed a main roster contract. Yes, Is that true? he's a full-time main roster, and they're going to also keep him on NXT for the time being until they transition him off. But That you know, he, begs the question, um, who will, real quick, I'm just going to spit a lot out here because it just came off the top of my head. Who's Kevin Steen going to drop the NXT title to? Joe? Well, I mean, he's scheduled to fight. Finn Balor um, on July 4th in Japan. I mean, I think that's the next opportunity for him to really drop it. Um, I mean, if he doesn't lose it there, 
I don't know who we would lose it to unless maybe they wait for Zane to come back like a few months after that. But I mean, if he's going to be touring on the main roster and doing stuff there for a while, he can't be both. You know, I'm assuming they're going to probably take it off him in NXT. But I mean, it, they also need to make it important when he loses because he hasn't lost yet. So I mean, I hate to see him like lose to Cena in two weeks and then lose again to Bauer like a week or two later. That would just kind of be weak. So I'd like to see him, you know, remain undefeated and make them make a big deal out of him losing and you know. And whatnot, which I mean, they're going to air that show from Japan on the network, right? So live, I believe. Yeah. How much does that cost? To you mean like to? No, the network. Oh, like per month? Yeah. I don't know. They don't usually advertise a lot, so I can't really tell you how much. Poor job by WWE not getting out the price. Check, Rumor check also check has it it was the last event at Nassau Coliseum a few weeks ago. Did you know that? I didn't. I didn't know that, but I did know that they were tearing the whole building down. They're doing that, <laughs> right? That's happening. Uh, anyway, um, Brian, as far as Kevin Steen dropping the title? Um, I agree with Joe. I think Finn Balor makes a lot of sense. He's probably the second hottest item on NXT right now, considering Zayn is off, so I won't consider him. Uh, uh, pump the brakes. How about Enzo and Big Cass? They're in a league of their own, so they, they don't go by rating system because, that, you know, they're the ones who told Rusev, wear some shoes. Yeah. He said, hey, Z, wear some shoes. <laughs> Rusev didn't wear shoes. Now his ankle's busted, and there, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> that's, that's storytelling for you. He needs to put some shoes on. The guy's got no shoes. With stars. So also, if it's not Finn Balor at the July 4th show... Uh, there's an umlaut. It's Balor. Finn Balor. Got it. Sorry. I'm an um, Irish kid from Long Island, so I don't do that thing. Um, but, umlaut? Uh, uh, yeah. that's, I graduated umlaut from St. John's University. <laughs> Congratulations, John. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I'm going to throw a curveball at you. He's going to drop the title to UHA Nation. I am a big Uha Nation fan. As you mean, uh, sorry, he doesn't have a name yet, right? Yeah, he, I, he, <laughs> we hope his name is Uha Nation. It'll probably be something stupid like the Nation. The other thing, actually, stupid, the Uha Nation of Domination. We get to that. I just I realized so. they. I think they taped a match with Owens against Samoa Joe for it's, NXT, but it was a non-title, I believe. Yeah, so I don't know if there's a title match in that program down the road now that Joe well, has signed a full-time deal with WWE at some point. In, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I did not know he signed a full time deal, and this is that is breaking news from the last couple of days. Yeah. Jo- well, actually, Joe just broke it right now. Joe brokered the deal, and then he delivered the news. That's he goes above and beyond for the all we, night long. We don't call one. him the Booker for nothing. We don't. He books. We, he contracts. He does it all. He's also my manager and my life coach. So <laughs> I apologize. In the bottom line, Joe's not getting paid enough. <laughs> yeah. We've got all the bases covered. Um, I mean, just quickly go throughout the rest of the card. Uh, the IC title match was okay. The IC title... Um, Dud in my eyes. No. Probably Joe, the worst. Joe's one. giving me the eyes. I would say the worst Elimination Chamber match I've ever seen, personally, and I actually like most of those guys. Guys, I I'm, I, I have a confession to make. I didn't watch half of it. You didn't miss anything. I, 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 I heard okay things about it. Um, yeah. Any match that Ryback wins, I feel like, is a good... Oh! I forget, that's what, guys, people that have been listening to uh, all the episodes of the podcast, aka our one listener, um, you'll know how much, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm actually getting choked up because Joe got so emotional, um, how much Joe loves Ryback. So if we could just give up a, a, a golf clap for the big guy. Can we get a, a feed me more chant going in honor of the big guy? <laughs> feed Joe Moore. I'm walking away feed Joe Moore. Mo- Joe's leaving. I'll Joe actually left the podcast. That's I a shoot. He, he walked out. He walked out of the company. All right. Well, and you know Joe's what? gone. And that leaves me and BK right now. So I know Joe is a um, an anti-Ryback guy, but BK is a big Ryback guy. Full disclosure, I'm a Ryback fan. I love his passion for the business. He's a little stiff to say the least, but you know what? I feel he gives his best and... It's not his fault the way they booked him. They've ruined him ever since he wrestled CM Punk for the title. He was red hot. They should have made pulled the trigger. But hold on, it. everybody, everybody, stop. Are we still Joe, talking about this? Joe, Joe? Joe's back, so the ride back talk will go on another day. Unacceptable. Joe has entered the building. All right, let's just skip over the. I I actually, I have been coming around to ride back a little bit. To be honest with you, why? I'm, just, uh, I'm no, sorry. I'm, that's, that's a lie. Are you okay? It's good. That was a shoot. I, I, I will. Here's what I'll say. Um, you, I saw you were you had some creative ideas. I saw you thought it'd be a good idea if they paired Ryback with Stephanie McMahon. Called the Joe won't watch Raw uh, faction yeah. anymore. I just I just sat down. You can make me get back up again. Uh, I, 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 the knees. I know the knees have been killing you. Been putting a lot. I, don't, I would, don't think I haven't been seeing the the, the growth in the quads. So I know you've been working uh, on your leg day. Uh, you know, 
gains gains twenty four sevens. I don't want you to have to get back up. Here's what I, I was gonna lead it lead into with that was I thought the uh, of the two chamber matches on the show I thought the tag match was the better one. I agree with you. I agree with Brian that the IC title match was probably one of the worst ones I've ever seen. I know, not they because not because Ryback won, just in general. I thought it was poorly. The laid guys out. you had in that match didn't scream of elimination chamber style participants to me. Um, I, I really thought our truth was going to win. Really, the entire time I thought he was going to be able to said no one ever. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then with the last minute addition of Mark Henry, I really thought that match had all the potential. That was almost up there with the. Um, with the Steamboat Flare match, I felt like the opportunity was there. Mm. Could have been one of the greats. Yeah. It could have uh, been. It's what he does. That's what Mark Henry does. And the, um, the Dusty finish, uh, the, the Dusty Rhodes finish in the Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose match left a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. I like the angle, what they're doing with Dean Ambrose, but I, I just. You're, they're booking Seth Rollins so weak. He, he's actually getting the Wade Barrett treatment. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You know, let, let me hop back to Ryback real quick. Ryback defended his title. On SmackDown against Cody Rhodes. That makes one more successful title defense in a week than Wade Barrett has his entire IC title career. That's true. So Ryback has that going for him. Yeah, good news. Um, but no, I think they're booking Seth Rollins so weak and it's it's not best for business. I don't I don't like the way they're doing it. No, I, I feel like um the that the dusty finish it has people have strong opinions about it, like one way or the other. Like some people like really hate it, some people are okay like are alright with it. I don't know. I mean it kinda I didn't necessarily mind it in this sense because, like, I guess I hadn't really seen it technically in a main event in a while. So it was kind of like, and people are people are into Ambrose. So I mean, as bad as it is, they kind of like suckered the fans into thinking he actually won. Like, and people were buying it at least in the arena. I thought, but um, yeah, I mean, in the end, it really just doesn't make Rollins look very good at all. I mean, has he won a match? Has Rollins gotten a pin on some not clean? That, no, yeah, not a title match clean. I haven't no. seen him get a pin on somebody in a very long time. No, I mean, you would think that. I don't know what their plan was for the summer, but I, I thought they were going to do him against Lesnar at some point. So you think that you'd want to make him look strong if he's even going to have a chance against Lesnar? And maybe they're not going to do that now. I don't really know. But um, it doesn't I mean... Why, why would you buy a pay-per-view with him against Lesnar just to see either he's going to get destroyed or he's going to find some way to weasel out of it? Like, that's also the two options right now. Yeah, I, I mean, when Jamie Noble is in your corner, literally the sky's the limit. <laughs> Former ROH world champ, for those that's, who don't know. That's, that's a good true. point. I had no problem with Jamie Noble as a wrestler, but... I um th- there's no reason to believe that Seth Rollins is a believable champion in my book. Um, I like Seth Rollins. I like Tyler Black. The matches he had in Ring of Honor, and um, I thought he was awesome in NXT. But he's to me personally, um, I don't think he's transitioned very well into WWE. They took away his finisher with the curb stomp. He doesn't do the curb stomp as well as Super Dragon does. Um, I just mm-hmm. watched. I've been watching a lot of Super Dragon lately. But um, I really I don't know. I'm not I'm not sold on Seth Rollins as the champion. I think uh, it hasn't been booked great. No, it definitely hasn't. The heel but champ works. The heel but champ you can't works. Make it a, such a scared heel champ where he never wins clean. The big matches, I get it, but he's got to pin a couple people clean just to make him look like a champion. You guys know I'm a huge Ring of Honor mark. Um, you want to talk about a good heel champion, Adam Cole. I think Adam Cole has you one, know one of the best. I, Joe is the biggest Adam Cole fan I know, and I think he makes such a great heel champion. It's such yeah. a difference between him and Rollins. Jay Lethal also makes a great Jay, Yeah, Jay Lethal, yeah. Um, the House of Truth. They do, you know, Jay Lethal put on a great match after a great match, and he'll he'll still, like, you know, he'll sell his wrestling ability, and it'll be a believable match, and then, you know, he might, be, he might cheat to win sometimes. But. Yeah, but a lot of times he does win clean like, with his finisher. Right. Like, that's just how, like, yeah, that's how it goes, like, for him. So I think that's why he's a well-respected guy. Like, I mean, people are starting, not that a lot of people are starting to cheer him, but I think he gets respect from the fans because yeah. he wins his matches. Like He had the stigma of the black machismo for a while, and I think it took people a long time to get over that. Yeah. So, um, But you're right. Like, And even if, you know, he does win in a cheating manner, it'll be, it won't be the main focus. You know, uh, Truth, you know, uh, Truth Martini will distract him for a quick second, and then it'll be lethal injection or whatnot. But it's not... It's not 17 guys trying to beat up Randy Orton. It's not Big Show. There's no cane running. There's no sign. I'm, you know what? I'm, I, I'm trying to turn over New Leaf in June. I'm trying to curse less on air. <laughs> and if I hear another cane running, I'm going to get up. I'm going to get t- I'm tight. Cane running. Tight. <laughs> there you go, Jimmy Helens for you. Tight. Tight. Um, I, I, I think I have the problem with Seth Rollins. What do you got? When is the last world champion of any organization, ROH, even TNA, if you want to consider them an organization what's, anymore. What, what, what's a TNA? Exactly. Okay. The, when was the last world champion that legit does not have a finishing move? 
Somebody answer that to me. Wow, that's a good question. Leilani Kai. WWF 1988. She won with a cradle. I made every single word of that up. I was hoping neither of you would call me on it. <laughs> well, what if, is this if it happened, then uh, Joe would say it happened. <laughs> Joe would Joe let me know. <laughs> yeah. uh, what was... What, what is he using now? Seth he Rollins? has not done the same finisher at all, I believe, since they took the curb stomp away from yeah. him. Uh, he used the pedigree once or twice. He used the pedigree used a couple pedigree. times, leading to a feud with Triple H. I think we all can agree that's going to happen down the road. Yeah, can, we, can we branch off for a quick second? Talk about finishing moves? For a long sure. second. Did, uh, did you guys watch East Stone Cold podcast? Yes. Okay. I watched parts of it. Did you see the part, um, BK, you watch it. Joe, did you see the part when Paul Heyman was asking Stone Cold the question? About John Cena using his stunner, yes. essentially? Uh, mm. Pretty great, much. Great answer by Stone Cold. Paul Heyman asked Stone Cold Steve Austin, who admittedly is a John Cena fan, how he feels about John Cena using the springboard stunner. And Austin says, why does he even bother using it? He doesn't pin anybody with it. I thought that was a great answer. Yeah. It would have been a good opportunity for John Cena to pick up another finishing move that... Uh, if if I'm I'm really trying not to curse, but if I'm getting the option of getting hit with a springboard stunner or an fu, I'm gonna take the fu ten out of ten times. Absolutely. And you can't pin me with that, but you're gonna pin me with an elevator fireman's carry. I think there's a little bit of uh, lacking reality. And but here's, here's time for me to give Cena some love. He actually does a very well springboard stunner. I feel it's one of his better moves. It just never works. Yeah. I- well, I mean, as good as uh, I'm right. talking in John Cena rankings, <coughs> yeah, all five right. moves of doom and well, now there's five that. and a half if you count the Springboard Stunner. But uh, I thought Stone Cold was very, you know, made a good point about it. How what, why does he bother doing it if it's if it's you know not going to get him three count? That was a good, you know, good point in his part. But um, you know, it, it's a nice added layer to John Cena's character, but it it, it serves no purpose. Um, all right, what else we got? We talked on the Elimination Chamber. We could just go right into breaking down the two pay per view. We could also. Did oh. we talk about the dusty finish? I believe we did. Did we give? Oh yeah. Joe um, said he liked it because were, it hasn't been used in the main event. Yeah, I thought. It was, How do you was feel um, since then? They've booked the Rollins versus Ambrose. The ladder match coming up on Sunday. I don't even know what it is. Yes, uh, ladder match. Yeah, it's a ladder match. Oh right, yeah, it's a ladder, match. Oh, right, yeah, it is ladder match. Right. Ambrose you, currently has stolen the title. Right. Yeah. How do they we, didn't just do two months ago for WrestleMania with the Intercontinental Title, but that's okay. Oh, it. as yeah, Vince has stated that. in the past, people do not remember six weeks ago, so it doesn't matter. Shame on me. Yeah, Any shame, attention. shame on Joe for wanting continuity. There's a magic word again, which I feel like I use every week when it comes to the WWE and what they are not doing. Um, do you, you like what they're doing? You don't like it? Let's go to uh, let's go to Joe. What do you got? I think it's you know uh, I think when we were talking about elimination chamber, I, I think it's the same deal here. They, I think Ambrose is just a stopgap you know, fill in feud for now they've got these like they've got three pay per view type shows in the span of six weeks. Um, which is just insane to me. So they just they need a program. Um and those guys have good matches. They need Rollins to keep the title. They ex- you know, I think people were conditioned to expect Ambrose not to win, which is why I thought the Dusty finish was an interesting thing because no one probably expected that to even happen. Yep. So um I, I think it's fine. I'm I'm sure the match will be good. I I can't imagine it wouldn't be good. Um I, but I would still expect Rollins to walk away with the title leading into whatever they're going to do the next month, whether it's with Lesnar or a Shield triple threat or something like that. Oh, the blackout. That's his finisher. That's what he used like once or twice. The flying oh, that knee, jumping Which I think was the best finisher he's had all along that he's never used. Yeah. I don't know why. Um, I agree with you on that one. I think uh, Dean Ambrose, he... <laughs> He's added a couple of, of new moves to like the spin around outside clothesline thing and the um Which he does too much, as much as I love Dean Ambrose. He does too much. It's, uh, it's overkill. He does the, the Nigel, which is the clothesline off the ropes. Um Brian, what do you think? How do you feel about this feud? What do you th- what's I was a fan of the Dusty Finish because as Gee, we stated earlier. Why am I only the every time I'm the only as we, guy that as we stated it. earlier, we were at the Evolve event, so I did not get to watch it live. But when I got home around eleven thirty I turned on the WWE network. Watched it. I marked out very hard for Kevin Owens pinning Cena, so we'll leave that at that. By the time I got to Ambrose Rollins, I was a little tired because it was about 2 in the morning. And when he actually pinned him clean, I marked out because I wasn't expecting it. Got him. And then I figured with the finish that it was, they would reverse it. They did. Crowd oh, they didn't reverse. They just made it a DQ. Same they just made there. the DQ. The crowd reacted, which I thought was good. I also think it was Vince and creative testing how the reaction would be if Dean won, if he was worthy of getting point. a title shot, if they wanted to pull it off Rollins, which I think they will eventually. So I was a fan of it. Um, 
Yeah, uh, like you said, it, it's it's a meaningless feud, and I do like the the Roman Reigns Dean Ambrose dynamic. I kind of enjoy them together. Um, but I, is it going to lead to an eventual heel Ambrose? Turn. Yeah, heel turn. I hope not. Just bring the shield back. Um, it's cool because you have a uh, Harper and Rowan who reunited for like what a week, and we haven't seen them in who knows how long. Yeah, they uh, were not even good enough to beat out Los Matadors to get into the Elimination Chamber, so there's that. It's good booking on their part. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about WWE related? We got the Money in the Bank coming up. We could. Yeah, I mean, I think that's yeah, the ladder match. We sort of touched on that. I mean, they're doing the rematch with Owens and Cena. I mean, I think right. we're all concerned. right? That I'm pumped for a clean John Cena victory. I'm concerned. Really touching on everybody. I don't. I'm why would you be rooting for that? Because the way I would say the last fourteen days have been going, I'm trying to play the opposite hand here. You know, it's it's like uh, in uh, Celtic Pride mm. when Daniel Stern and Dan Aykroyd had to root for the Jazz so the Celtics could win. Mm. You're pulling that. the George Costanza. You're gonna do the opposite of whatever you think is right. Well, and see if that it seemed to work so far. So. It worked for George. So. Yeah. Um, I. I don't think it's a big. I got to be honest. I don't think it's a big deal if Cena wins. Um, Owens already made a name for himself by pitting Cena clean the first time. So, let me ask a question to you. Let me ask. Assu- a assuming you. Cena wins clean, which I think will. Have, I don't know if he'll win clean, but he'll he should win most likely. Yep. Do you have Cena win the third and final trilogy match, or do you have Owens go over for the program? Because as we know, I have Owens go over in heel fashion. Okay. With a low blow pop a power bomb, something. I'm all for that because, as we know, BK loves a good heel, and BK, you just turned heel. You turned heel on me like an hour ago. I forget what I said. I'm, I do it about six times a day, so yeah. it's not a BK. Uh, is I actually, turn heel more than Big Show. Yeah, so BK's about to turn heel on his own child. <laughs> you know. you um, do what you got to do. You know, whatever's best for business. As, you gotta or sell S- Steph for business. You know, as Stephanie when she was. Ah, uh, uh, why'd you have to? Joe just sat down. I'm gonna start doing push-ups on your floor. I've I've done push-ups. He's uh, he's do, Joe's doing push-ups. One. One. Two, three, four. These aren't girls push ups. Five. These are real. Six, seven. How many can you get? Eight, nine, ten. Good job. And now we know what. Now we know why they call him Joey Biceps. I feel better now. Yeah, I feel. I remember. I did do push ups last night. What were we talking about? I'm not sure. Uh, Yeah. Uh, We're back to Cena Owens. Cena Owens, yeah. As we know, Cena feuded with Rusev, and Rusev was red hot. That was brutal. And oh God, you have this Rusev lost the program to Cena, and now he is red not. That was that was a st- <laughs> <laughs> that was a step in the right direction for America, though. Well, what's important is America. He had to move back to Bulgaria after that. You see, he got yeah, exiled. He back into Russia. If Rocky IV had taught me anything, it's that the Russians do not like to lose. So, bottom line, you lose to Cena, you lose your girl, you lose your country, and you lose your spot on the WWE roster. Apparently, you lose so. your ankle as well, and lose so. your ankle. Well, he didn't wear shoes. Enzo warned him. He didn't yeah. wear the shoes. Mm-hmm. Guy needs to put some shoes on. Me and Big Cass? Usually when Joe claps his hands, it means he's got something ready for us. I'm waiting. What do you got, Joe? No, I... Are we... Uh, is there anything more you wanted to discuss about... I'm, I'm good. You good? I'm good talking about well, that. Because we didn't talk <clears throat> about... Uh, we haven't talked about uh, Ring of Honor. We talk about Ring of Honor a lot on this, obviously. But uh, I think literally like the day after we last did one of these, um, the news came out that they were getting an hour of TV time on Destination America right before True. TNA on Wednesday nights. At now, they were on TV in select markets and um, Sinclair Broadcasting, very, but it was very, very select. Very, very yeah. select. I so, could watch, like, Finding Bigfoot easier than I could watch um, Ring of Honor. But now... Grill Masters. God, I do love Grill Masters. Um, that and Diners, Drives, and... Diners? Dives, dives and Drives? Drive-ins, drive-ins, yeah. Every time I watch it, I get starving. Yeah, it's food as a matter of fact, uh, as per I'm cutting weight, I'm going to watch the hell out of that in about 20 minutes. But I thought that was, uh, I think we it was can move on from surprising Dye for, it's, yeah. It's, it's the blonde hair. Yeah. He, he just, every time he eats something so delicious and I, I just can't help but wonder, you know, like, could I make something? I, I think we're getting sidetracked here. I'm just okay. wondering yeah, if the train's coming off the rails. If, I'm wondering if I can you know make what? something. We're going to talk more about ROH. That'll bring Mike right back in. There you go. Yeah, so I think it took a lot of people, if not everybody, by surprise. Even some of the wrestlers that work for Ring of Honor, I don't think that they knew that this announcement was going to be coming. Um, so... I don't know what you guys think about it. I've heard different schools of thought in terms of... like It's like a lead-in to... Uh... Yeah, like that was one where it was almost like a lead-in to TNA to see if like they would all, you know, um, if it would kind of 
be like a block of wrestling programming every Wednesday night with two different promotions. Uh, Spike TV does that really well. Spike TV does something very similar on um, Friday nights. They have Friday night fights. Mm-hmm. What is it called? Bro? I don't remember. On Spike TV, but they have um, Premier, the kick, Premier, Premier fights. Boxing. They have boxing. They have kickboxing and um, like a... Uh, they have boxing and like then kickboxing yeah, or MMA, MMA with Bellator. Bellator. And you know, I think Spike is trying to carve out that niche. I know we're going off topic here for professional wrestling, but um I I like that what Destination America is doing. Um they also have a show called Mountain Monsters where a bunch of uh hillbillies find different Bigfoot or Yeti as you might call them. And let me tell you something, the show is more staged than uh than the Tony Awards. But I watch a shit out of it every week. I'm cursing. I'm talking about Mount Monsters. I feel like we're, uh, I've, I've, <laughs> we're angling for a sponsorship I've, 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 <laughs> on this podcast right now. <laughs> and they have a show we're called uh, their whole lineup. A Haunting. If you look at my DVR, it's all Destination America. Destination America, hold on. Destination America and Destination America. So Now, do you think it's going to be a situation where they keep both programs on Wednesday nights for like the foreseeable future and like this is going to be their thing? Or do you think this is just one of those things where they're putting them together for now and then come September... When Destination America has this "quote unquote" out clause with TNA, they're just going to drop TNA and use Ring of Honor by itself. I hope that people aren't viewing Ring of Honor as TNA Junior. That's my issue with it. Um, I think Ring of Honor is an exponentially better product, wrestling, uh, just all around. Um, TNA has been around. Actually, they've been around about the same amount of time. Um, yeah, close to it. I think. Yeah. TNA had a bigger platform. I think yeah, the only right. bigger platform, um, bigger TV. name wrestlers. But as far as professional wrestling, Ring of Honor, nothing's even close. Um, I've heard that TNA was canceled, and then it wasn't canceled. I, I'm, I, well, that's the thing. Really I'm not sure. I'm yeah. not sure if anything's been confirmed. So that's why I'm just curious, like what you guys thought as far as what the actual end result's going to be. Like it doesn't seem like they just added Ring of Honor, right? And it's only an hour. And I don't know the specifics behind it, but from what I understand, like the Destination America and TNA relationship is kind of like. Like when Spike was with TNA, they were funding, I think, All a good, in. A yeah, good amount I'm of it. I'm pretty sure Destination America. And that's what, I, yeah, yeah. that's what I think about that too. Now, I'm assuming that that's not the case with Ring of Honor because Ring of Honor operates independently. Right? And they, 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 they have are owned own by shows. Sinclair Broadcasting Company. Right. Like yeah. they're literally just simulcast or you know, broadcasting their show that they tape every week on their own, like without Destination America. So they're Correct. just airing an hour show. Right. So I think that's one difference between the two. Is like if It's probably a lot cheaper for Destination America. Too. Yeah. yeah so if they're point. really like supporting or backboning TNA. You know, to be on TV every week. Um, I did read that they're going to add to the broadcast to future Ring of Honor because they're going to put some money into the broadcast, if you will. So, mm-hmm. the uh, yeah, I read there might be like one or two live events. Oh, um, cool! Which I think would be awesome. Yeah, that would be good. I just love being able to do VR Ring of Honor. And let me ask you guys both watch it, right? Yes. How many matches were on this week, Jeff? Four, I think. There were four matches in how long? In an hour. In an hour. Cool. Okay. And there was also, was there four? Was there another? Was there a segment as well or no? Uh, the Cody Rhodes segment. I'm t- the Cody Rhodes. Wow. The Colby Carino Cody segment. Rhodes. Well, there was that, the, the addiction did that little promo. Correct. Yes, yeah. that's that what was. it was. How many, ma- there were four matches. Right, it was, it was Ferrara versus Kushida, right, it was the opener. Right. And then they had, um, oh, now I'm going to blank. Well, they had Moose, Moose versus Colby was another right. one. The main event tag match. Yeah. But there was, I thought there was a fourth match. There is, and I can't remember what it was. That's going to bug the crap out of me. If we don't well, figure it out. Well, you know we're going to have to chalk this one up. I'll have to chalk it up. Yeah. I don't want to have to get into it. Can't remember what I feel folks. bad. We can't yeah, I, feel like a, I feel like a jerk. I feel like I've, you know, recurring trend, I actually feel like I've let a lot of people down with that one. But what I'm getting at is, you watch one hour of Ring of Honor, you're going to get 85% wrestling. Yeah. So... And it's just so cool they could fit four, you know, good to above average matches in um, in an hour. So I think it will probably take over for TNA and hopefully get a bigger platform. Um, Apparently the numbers were also very good for the first showing. I didn't know that. That's From good. what I read, they were very happy with the amount of viewers Can that I, they got. I Go think ahead, I, I read, because uh, I think what they do on Destination America is they, they air each show and they air like the replay of each one like right after that. So I think I saw like the total combined viewership between like the TNA and two showings and the ROH two showings, and it was like maybe a hundred thousand viewers more for TNA total. Which I mean, if you think about it, is not is not that much considering they've been on, you know, a lot longer and had this like national platform, like Brian said, like for a long time, and we're always just kind of been more segregated in terms of where it's been aired. So. Can I, uh, being the, the biggest Ring of Honor mark here, can I, can I be honest with you guys for a second? I'm a little worried about the Best in the World pay-per-view. 
Um, because they haven't announced a lot of matches yet? They haven't announced a lot of matches, and I feel like um, this most week, the recent weekend, it wasn't a TV taping, was it? It was just... No, I think, yeah, I think it was just live events. Yeah, just live events. Um, no Pay-per-view was in two weeks, correct? pay in two weeks, yep. Yeah, 19th. No Red Dragon. Well, I heard, uh, so they were, yeah, they were in Japan. Right? Yeah, they were, they competed in the best of the Super Juniors tournament. Main yeah. event was Kyle O'Reilly versus Kushida. Have yet to watch it. Heard it was a great match. I saw Kyle O'Reilly tweeted that I think he was flying home today. So maybe Speaking that's... of Kyle O'Reilly tweets. Yeah. Uh, Break, breaking news. <laughs> breaking news. Um, Kyle O'Reilly retweeted a picture, uh, a, a video of me and our uh, one listener doing a little pro wrestling training. He said, awesome job, and he said, she must have a good coach. You guys hear that? It's me patting myself on the back. It's also the sound of Kyle Riley putting our very own mic over. That's yeah. What, that's what he does. He, he put me over. He's, uh, I'm, I can't wait to become the fourth member of Red Dragon, as Tom Lawler is the third, and I refuse to in- uh, announce Shayna Baszler as part of Red Dragon. But What's a Shayna Baszler? Uh, I, oh, she just got cut, by the way. She got cut from... Music. Oh, a jobber got cut. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Brian yeah, spitting some venom. Um... Yeah, and there's still no tag match announced for the Ring of Honor pay-per-view either. Although I believe Addiction on the last TV taping, which just aired, as we said, on Destiny of America. Yeah, they called out Red Dragon. They called out Red Dragon. Um, the problem with that was the next weekend was going to be the... Um, Joe, which one was that? The I, It was one of the super shows, and Bobby Fish wasn't able to make the flight. That's so right. yeah, I think it was one of the ones in Toronto. What was it? No, wait. Yeah, no, it wasn't Toronto. Toronto. Yeah, was it? it was Toronto. It was something yeah. where he had trouble crossing the border. I yeah, he couldn't cross Canada the border. Or... Apparently, um, something about his triceps were too big, and he thought he was smuggling something. It was a weird story. But um, he so gets that a lot. he does get that a lot. So hopefully, they're going to do some sort of uh, tag rematch at Best in the World. Um, the matches so far are good for Best in the World. What else do we have? Um, well, they have the main event, right? Lethal Briscoe. Yeah. Um, um, the three way, which with, the, I think the build, the lethal versus Briscoe was awesome. I yeah, they're doing a great job with that. Um, they have Elgin versus Moose versus Roderick Strong are the number one contenders. Triple Threat, which would be excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, Can we get a prediction for the winner of the Triple Threat number one contender match? Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna book Brian's prediction, and you're gonna say Moose. I think Moose is undefeated. Correct? Correct me if uh, I'm wrong. No, the streak ended. I believe. Am I right, Joe? Yes, it did. At a TV taping that hasn't aired yet. Sorry, I've been cycling through Twitter on my phone. Okay. They announced the uh, Red Dragon versus the Addiction at Best in the World. Oh, there you go. So when did they announce that? I don't know. Uh, five hours ago. World Bre- Tag Team Finals uh, are news. No DQ match, by the way. No DQ, ma- D- guys. That, that's um, how you book a feud. That's how. I'm so. I, I'm that's how we do it on this podcast. That's I'm speechless. Um, great job by Joe. I'm a little worried about the no DQ. I'm a little worried. We're gonna save and run in. As the uh, are they still the addiction or, or are they, are they the yeah. KRD? No, they're they're listed as the addiction here. So it's the the tag titles are on the line. Man. That's going to be an awesome so match. I'm for. super pumped. Great job, Joe. Great job, Joe. Getting on that. Have we seen funny. Saban since the reveal? He was with the he, addiction. He he's with O'Reilly one on one on one of the Ring of Honor TV episodes, and I think beat him. I'm pretty sure there, there was, was some chicanery. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of. Inter- some interference. I don't want to say a lot. There's some interference, and they ended up winning. So, there you go. Um, uh, the, we spoke with the Moose match. The Moose Roderick Strong. I'm oh right, predictions. Prediction. Right, um, predictions. You said Moose. Who did you say was going to win? I'm going to go with Roddy. You going Roddy? I'm. Uh, I got a soft by Roderick Strong this year. He's been killing it. I don't know. I'm torn, man. That's a tough one. It's going to be a great match. Because Roderick Strong. Who's the third member? Elgin. Elgin. Yeah. yeah. I think we all agree Elgin's not going to win. Yeah. I don't know. They've been pushing Elgin. You know, either I won't be upset either way. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, you know what? I'll take Elgin to be different. That way we all have a horse in the race. How about that? One of us cool. have to be right. One yeah. of us will have to be right. It's going to be a triple DQ. I could feel it. Um, Donovan Dijak and Mark Briscoe, has that been announced yet? Uh, I don't know. I didn't see that. Okay. Um, um, the we'll the addiction. Not the addiction. The, the kingdom against uh, the Bullet Club. Let's. Right. That that's going to be awesome. Except for Matt Taven. Sorry, Taven. Just not a big Matt Taven guy. Um, Can't all be winners. It's got to be some <laughs> losers. Are they going to tease a Mount Rushmore reunion? Little young bucks, Adam Cole. Yeah, maybe. Well, I think they they, they did tease it last time. They they were joking. They, yeah, um, this match happened right at one of the the super shows. Yep. You had, you mentioned that. So um, I think the Kingdom won that, right? If yeah. I'm not mistaken. So I don't uh, see the Bullet Club losing. I really don't. Yeah, you wouldn't think with uh, Styles and the Bucks on pay per view, but we'll we'll see. I mean, that should be good. And the only other match that I remember them announcing that well now there's five. That's the fifth one we just announced. Um, was. Um, Seidel and ACH versus uh, Adam Page and BJ Whitmer. God, I can't stand BJ Whitmer. 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 
Cool so, whip. Cool whip. Yeah. Um, I hope Seidel and uh, ACH go over. No Cedric, huh? Not yet. Yeah, there's. I would say you're still going to get probably four more matches. I would hope. Yeah, there's five announced, so I'm thinking at least, yeah, like three three more at least. Probably uh, one or two matches announced that day, I would yeah. think. Day of, yeah. Like the pre-show. Day of pre-show, right. right. Yeah, so. just well, get two uh, great wrestlers in there and doing the damn thing. You'll see a Will Ferrara. I don't know if he's okay after the Dean Ambrose attack on Raw, though. Oh, where he got punched once? <laughs> and pushed in the back like a schoolboy on the freaking playground by Seth Rollins. That's that's the one. In the great words of Adam Sandler, that's assault, brother. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the Ring of Honor pay-per-view this, um, this Sunday. We'll see. I don't really have high hopes for... Can we get a prediction for the title versus title match, which Carino has called the biggest match in Ring of Honor history? It's true. Do we buy that it's the biggest match in Ring of Honor history? I think it has to be because, you know, it's weird when you have a title, you call it a title versus title match and you put both titles on the line. That's weird because John Cena and Kevin Owens are in a title versus title match. Well, and that no was a champion versus champion match. Slight difference in WWE's <laughs> logic. <laughs> Vernacular. Sorry. Um, I, eesh, that's a tough one. I think if Jay Lethal does win, we're going to get a new member to the House of Truth. Uh, Possibly Mark. Mm, there's the rub. There's the rub. I don't see I, it happening, but that's just one way heel BK would book this. <laughs> BK would book it as a heel, or Papa Briscoe would even come in. Um, maybe ODB. No, I, I don't. I don't see Jay Briscoe losing. I don't know. I'm gonna go with Jay. Brian. Well, when was the last time Jay was pinned? They have. It's like been two and a half years ago. Probably two and a half, three years. Yeah. When was the last time Jay Lethal was pinned? About a year and a half ago. Two years. Oh no, he lost. He actually tapped out to Kyle O'Reilly in a uh, in a tag team match. Yeah, I think he's might he may have lost in like a tag match too to um, I don't know if it, oh, this is really bad. I don't remember if it was Cedric Alexander or ACH, but it was one of them. Um, it was there he was stole some, Jay Lethal's finishing move. There was one like multi person match, from your I think, and, yeah, from wrestler. So um, I remember him. Event, it might have been like okay, a gauntlet thing I mean, for the for the title match. Okay. Um, when was the last time Jay Lethal was pinned as a singles competitor? Do we know that? No. Either way, um, it's been a long. It's time. been a while. It doesn't happen often. I but guess they have that. this. They do this weird thing in Ring of Honor where they build their champions and their champions don't lose matches. I, I kind of like that. So that's why this match has such a big fight feel. Uh, Joe, what do you got? Briscoe, lethal. Briscoe, lethal. Briscoe, I don't know. Lethal. I'm not really ready yet. I, I think. Um, I expected. Oh yeah, we got time. We have, yeah, along, I expected Briscoe to win, um, but Lethal hasn't really gotten one up on him lately. I think. I feel like Jay. I think last week's episode right ended with. Briscoe giving him a J-Driller at the end. Yes, yes, right. So um, they've only got two TV tapings, excuse me, two TV show airings until the pay-per-view this Wednesday and the following Wednesday. Right. So I don't know what's going to happen on those shows. I don't rem- I didn't remember the spoilers, but um, I think after that, maybe I'll have a better idea. I, I still think Briscoe's going to walk away with the title at this point, but that could change. Sure. Um, do we get a dusty finish? No, you don't get a dusty finish. <laughs> we got a dusty finish in the last ring of pay-per-view, and I was tight about that. But <laughs> refresh my memory on that. That was the four way match right, when the right, KRD right. and got involved, right? Which I did order my first ever Ring of Honor pay per view that I ordered through mm-hmm. my cable provider. Money Hell well yes. spent. Money well spent. Money well spent. They don't have the ROH network yet. I'm waiting for that. They're working on it. I talked to um, Steve, Joe Koff. Mm. You know, Carrie he, Silkin. Carrie, yeah. yeah, they're working on it. So. Well, now that you and Kyle O'Reilly are tight, maybe that. Uh, we, yeah, he you, follows you know. me on Twitter. You know who else he follows on Twitter? Obama. I'm just saying. Tight. Obama and a young Anna Kornikova. Tight, right? You tight? tight. <laughs> Joe's tight? Tight. Joe's Jimmy tight. There you go, Jimmy. Two two bobs. Um, so I think, I mean, unless you guys have anything else we got going on, um, I promise there will be a podcast next week. Um, we could do, I feel like we should get one going on after. Raw next week, we'll be able to recap... Uh, Tables, ladders, and pigs and dragons. What the hell's name? Do? Money in the bank. Money in the bank, same thing. Uh, you know, <laughs> whatever it might be. So. Before we uh, wrap up here, quick, I'd like everybody's quick prediction on who will be the Money in the Bank winner, since we've not discussed that actual match, which is kind of a big deal for WWE. Oh yeah, I couldn't tell you the match. Uh, Roman well, Reigns. Yep, yeah, Reigns. Oh right, Randy Neville. Orton. Randy Neville. Orton. Uh, Kane, I think, put himself in the match. Sweet. Um, Kofi Kingston, I believe. Yep, Kofi. And Sheamus. Kofster. And Sheamus. I don't know, it's... I pick Roman Reigns for everything, 
So Okay, I pick Seamus I'm, for everything. So I'm going Seamus. Joe, Roman Reigns? Roman Reigns. I reluctantly pick Roman Reigns, and I'm going to put a caveat that he should turn heel immediately after winning or during the match. But he won't, but he will or still he win. Should, or should... Give Dean Ambrose a title and then turn him on Dean Ambrose. Well, yeah, I read somebody suggested that. Like Ambrose actually does win. And Who then, suggested it? I read it somewhere on the you know the interwebs. Yeah, well, maybe you know uh, the dirt I just, sheets. Maybe it was you. I don't know. Dean no, it wasn't. Really under no, maybe I read the so, internet and you just blew up my spot. Maybe that guy stole Mike's idea. Maybe he's got it in his head somehow. Maybe I'm hanging on by a thread, Joe. I'm reading "Don't Kill Myself" books, and you're blowing up my spot of some guy on the internet. You know what? Send me the link. Send me, send me the link. I'll send it to you. Yeah, send me by electronic mail. At NY Enforcer. That's like the fourth time I've put my Twitter on there. Okay. You, you need, know who you uh, need to follow Mike on Twitter. He's, you a, should, he's a great Twitter follow. Uh, or Instagram, if you will. Even better Instagram follow, if that's I, possible. I do the best I can. I try to up the pictures of puppies every day, because puppies really make the world go around. Puppies and, and you know gains. What? Puppies that's and gains and baby pigs. Lots of baby pigs. Chick one. magnet. That's, they, they call me CM Enforcer for Chick Magnet Enforcer. Um... Brian, we need you on more, buddy. I appreciate you taking the 41 minutes and 19 seconds to talk to us. And um, I just feel like big things are ahead. Joe, you look angry. I'm going to go take a warm shower. Warm shower? Yeah. Any particular reason? The meat locker. Icebox oh. situation. Oh, I apologize. I have the testosterone levels of a 1986 Daniel Day-Lewis. Okay? Is and it gets hot in here. What? Is that hot? It's, it's high. Have you seen Daniel Day Lewis and Gangs of New York? Uh, no. No, Gangs Dan- of New York. Isn't that Leonardo DiCaprio? And Daniel Day Lewis. The Butcher? God. I, I, I don't know. Um, I'm I just, not very cultured, so I don't it, know. No, you, it's not that you're not cultured, just that I am sweating. It's 59 degrees in here, and I'm sweating buckets, Joe. It's all the gains. Things? Gains make you sweat. Things aren't going well, pal. This is all I got. Yeah, we're all kind of. I got Sega Genesis. All kind of on edge. I got The Horseman. Okay. And I got music. Let's hit up some uh, Chicago on the way out. I, that's a good call. Good call on your part. So, till next time.